Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless united nations chief rings alarm bell on global peace and security invokes article 99 united nations secretary general antonio guterres made a rare move to formally warn the security council of a global threat from the gaza war as arab states seek to leverage that to renew a push for the council to call for a ceasefire the Secretary General has today delivered a letter to the President of the Security Council invoking Article 99 of the Charter of the United Nations. This is the first time that Antonio Guterres has done this since he became Secretary General in 2017. Article 99 states, and I quote, that the Secretary General may bring to the attention of the Security Council any matter in his opinion that may threaten the maintenance of international peace and security. 1 Thessalonians 5.3 While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. I fear the consequences could be devastating for the security of the entire region. We have already seen the spillover in the occupied West Bank, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, and Yemen. There is clearly, in my view, a serious risk of aggravating existing threats to the maintenance of international peace and security. Everything I just described represents an unprecedented situation that led to my unprecedented decision to invoke Article 99, urging the members of the Security Council to press to avert a humanitarian catastrophe and appealing for a humanitarian ceasefire to be declared. While we deal with the current crisis, we cannot lose sight of the only viable possibility for a peaceful future. A two-state solution on the basis of United Nations resolutions and international law with Israel and Palestine living side by side in peace and security. This is vital for Israelis, Palestinians and for the international peace and security. Daniel 9, 26 and 27. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. Then he, the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many, who is Israel, the Palestinians, and possibly other Muslim nations, for one week, which is seven years. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years, he, the Antichrist, shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wings of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even unto the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. In Bible prophecy, we are told in Daniel 9, 26 and 27, the prince who is to come, who is the Antichrist, will come on the world scene and strongly confirm a seven-year covenant of peace in the Middle East between Israel and her enemies. This covenant will kick off the seven-year tribulation. 1 Thessalonians 5, 3 While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. So how does peace and security lead to sudden destruction? And what is the sudden destruction? Is it the rapture of the church? Is it the revealing of the Antichrist? Is it war? While we can conjecture what the sudden destruction is, the Apostle Paul tells us Christians are not part of it. The Apostle Paul says this in 1 Thessalonians 4, 15-18. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. In these verses of scripture, the Apostle Paul is undoubtedly talking about the rapture of the church. The Apostle Paul continues in 1 Thessalonians 5.3, For when they say peace and security, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. The Apostle Paul makes a distinction between we and they. In 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul says, 
We who are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, along with the dead in Christ, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. In 1 Thessalonians 5.3, Paul says, While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. The sudden destruction that comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape could very well be when the rapture occurs. This sudden destruction comes upon them while they are saying peace and security. Sudden destruction comes and this is where the distinction the Apostle Paul makes comes into play. They will not escape. That would seemingly indicate that we escape as we read in Luke 21:36. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Sudden is the Greek word epnidios, which means unexpected, suddenly. Destruction is the Greek word alethros, which means ruin, i.e. death, punishment. First Thessalonians 5.3 could be translated like this. For when they say peace and security, then unexpected and sudden punishment comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Could it be that this sudden destruction is the rapture of the church? 1 Corinthians 15.52 tells us that the rapture will happen suddenly, in the twinkling of an eye. 1 Corinthians 15.50-54 Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Twinkling is the Greek word repe, which means a jerk of the eye. By analogy, an instant, i.e. suddenly. Is the sudden destruction coming, and with it the rapture of the church? We see the prophesied Antichrist right onto the world stage in Revelation 6-2. Immediately following the rider of the white horse beginning his conquest of the world, we see peace will be taken from the earth when the rider of the red horse of war begins his ride across the earth as we read in Revelation 6-3 and 4. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see, another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another and there was given to him a great sword. Those who are here to see this will be as those who lived in the days of Noah. All will be well and life will be moving forward as normal when suddenly a flood of God's judgment will begin to fall on mankind which will last for seven years, the culmination of which will be the visible, physical, bodily return of Jesus Christ to the earth at Armageddon. So as we look at what prophecy predicts is going to occur, potentially in the not too distant future, the world is someday going to rejoice that peace has finally come to the Middle East. What will follow that, however, will be anything but peace as the world is suddenly going to explode into warfare. Is the sudden destruction coming, and with it the rapture of the church, the revealing of the Antichrist, and war? All those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will not be here to see the terrible time to come wherein God's judgment will fall upon a world that has forgotten Him. Where will we be? In the presence of Jesus Christ our Lord as a result of the rapture of the church and there will be no announcement as to when that will take place whatsoever prior to it occurring. And if you find yourself hereafter it occurs, your future is going to be horrific. The stage is being set for Daniel's prophecy concerning the arrival of the Antichrist, which will be preceded by the rapture of the church. The only conclusion one can draw from all this is this, Jesus Christ is coming soon. Consider this a heads up if you're a Christian, and be forewarned if you're a non-believer. If you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, it's time to get to know him, and the sooner, the better. We cannot lose sight of the only viable possibility for a peaceful future, a two-state solution, on the basis of United Nations resolutions and international law, with Israel and Palestine living side by side in peace and security. God gives the most dire warning to the nations who would divide up his land, as we read in Joel 3, 1 and 2, and Zechariah 12, 8 and 9. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God. 
like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Stay tuned as we continue to watch Bible prophecy unfold right before our very eyes. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what? If his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning, my prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.